Dora. She was seven years old. Um, she has been on various talk shows such as Oprah, CNN, all the big talk shows. Um, she's written a couple other books. So she's going to tell you a little bit about that. And her message is really for children to get them inspired about reading and writing. But something that she started doing in the last couple of years is teaching teachers how to do that inspiration with their kids. Um, about two years ago, we loaned Adora a video conference system so that she wouldn't have to travel so much. It's so hard to be a rock star mm -hmm. and travel here and yonder and, and still um, you know, be able to connect with kids every day and share that inspirational message. So she's doing a lot of her programs now over video conference. And again, she's also on the CILC. Adora, I've got Ruth and Monica here from the CILC. Hi, so, nice to see you. And we're going to end today with, with a presentation from Monica to kind of tie all these various uh, presenters together. So with no further ado from me, I would like you to take it away, Ms. Fetok. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's so great to see you. I hope that you've been having a wonderful conference. Uh, I use video conferencing every day, actually, um, and it's something that I really enjoy doing. So you might be wondering, how did a 12-year-old get into this? Well, it really did start with the publication of my first book, Flying Fingers, Master the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing. I published it when I was 7 years old. It contained some of my stories and writing tips. More recently, I published a second book called Dancing Fingers. It's a book of poetry I co-authored with my older sister. And so reading and writing is something that has always been really fun for me. When I was uh, around, my parents would read to my sister and I when we were little, and when I was around four or five, I thought that everybody loved to read, and it was really shocking to me to find out that there were actually some people in the world who didn't like to read. So uh, I thought, oh, well, that's got to change. And um, so I started going around to local schools and talking about why I love reading and writing and uh, bringing the books along with me to show kids that they too could really do great things with reading and writing. And that's uh, really how I started teaching. Uh, but of course that did take its toll because it was flying to lots of different schools uh, really around the world and it was maybe um, only a few schools every few months which wasn't quite the kind of impact that uh, I wanted. I wanted um, a little more in that. So, I started using video conferencing to teach subjects like writing, reading, social studies, leadership. These are just a few of the things I talk about in um, the lessons that I give to students. And uh, I have these posts on CILC, so you can see these are just um, a few of the lessons that I have. Flying fingers, vocabulary, poetry writing, digital citizenship, etc. So I really enjoy talking to students, and I think that they enjoy it because it is this kid's eye view, and it is uh, one of their peers. So uh, those are the programs I have for students, and I use tools like CILC, Tamburg, and Active Boarding on behind me uh, to share these lessons. Now I wanted to ask you, are you familiar with CILC? Can you raise your hand if you have used CILC before? I see some raised hands. Great. Well, for those of you who haven't, uh, and I'm sure that you will hear a lot more about CILC in the upcoming presentations, but just to show you um, a sneak peek, it's the Center for Interactive Learning and Collaboration, and the great thing about CILC is that if you're looking for video comments and content, uh, all you have to do is type in a search word and you get it. So uh, let's say your class is learning about reptiles, you type in reptiles, search, and you get all about reptiles, compare, contrast, reptiles, and amphibians, Reptiles Live, Sea Turtles, Amazing Reptiles of the Sea. That is a great title, Amazing Reptiles of the Sea. Uh, so you're able to get all this content just by typing in a search word. Now to try something uh, on a little bit different of a subject, I'm going to refresh the page and I'm going to type in writing. So if I type in writing, it looks like some of the things I get are advanced descriptive writing, but I guess who? Adora Sweet Talk. Right, that's me. Actually, um, the reason I type in writing is to uh, kind of 
sneakily advertise my own programs, as you may have guessed. But uh, <laughs> um, and you can get more specific than that if, if they're assigned like descriptive writing or six traits that you want to um, your students to get content from. Then you can type that in. So CILC is a really great tool. It's um, really easy and simple to find content, and uh, it's a great way to hook up your students with that learning. And that's what I post my programs on. Then I have an interactive whiteboard, and of course I use Pamberg Video Conferencing, as you know. So those are the um, technology <coughs> tools that I use. Now, one Adora, thing that... Could you, could you talk... <coughs> Adora, stop for a yes. second. Yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> could you talk a little bit about your experience in working with adult learners? What are that's, some of the, yes. the pitfalls and, you know... <laughs> go ahead. Yes, that is exactly what I was going to start on, actually. Um, I was going to say, as Jim Zanese asked me to talk about earlier. <laughs> um, so yes, thank you, Mike. Um, so I um, not only teach students, but I also talk to teachers quite a bit with professional development, and that's another cool thing about CILC. It's not just for finding content for students, it also has a lot of professional development for teachers. And so I talk mainly about a kid's eye view of an innovative classroom, and how teachers can motivate kids using technology tools. Uh, I talk about a few of my favorite technology tools like video conferencing, interactive whiteboards, blogging, etc. And, um, and then I share that with teachers around the world through video conferencing. Now, one of the greatest things about that is that it allows me to have a bigger impact, but I have to say that when I'm talking with teachers, then, uh, and it comes time for questions and answers, I always allow maybe five minutes less for teachers than I do for students because students are all raising their hands and have questions and teachers are, I don't know, pretty silent. And I'm not sure why this is. My theory is that since uh, first grade and second grade, everybody's raising their hand around fourth, fifth, maybe half the class. Once you get up into junior high, it's, eh kind of hard. And then teachers, I don't know if it's arthritis in the hand raising joint or something, but um, <laughs> yeah, um, just not, not very many questions. That would be one of the challenges, I would say, about talking with teachers and professional love. Not that many questions. But um, on the other hand, it can be really, uh, a lot of times if I'm making jokes, then teachers will get them more often, or at least quicker than sometimes students will. Uh, so I hear more laughter most of the time. Um, which is which is good because I make a lot of jokes and if they fall flat then I'm like a another pitfall about talking to students is I can't really make as many jokes about news. But yes, I see a raised hand. I do I have a question. Yes, thank you. Um, have you ever done have you ever done a blended in service with students and teachers? I actually did do that once. I believe it was uh, Broward County teachers and students, which was really an interesting experience um, because I was talking, the presentation itself was tailored more for teachers, but then there were students there, and so occasionally I would address the students and say, what do you think about this? What are some of the suggestions you have for teachers? And I would like to do more of those because it's a good way. For me, I feel like if it's just me talking, it's only one student, it's even more powerful if teachers can get input from all of their students. And um, so definitely that would be an interesting thing to consider, and that's a great idea. I think it would be, too, the impact, just because having you here with teachers, but if you had teachers watching their students, watching you, woo! -hoo. Yes, that would be amazing. Oh, and actually, there was another one. Um, I was recently at the ETEC Ohio conference, and Jan was there as well. Um, and and there was uh, I was teaching personal narrative to some students, and then there were some teachers watching that. So that was pretty cool. It was a lot of interaction that way. But um, I would love to do more of those. Thank you. Yes. Um, now, and as far as uh, successes go, there is one, and this is actually on, on the line of students, but I was speaking one time at Ballard Elementary School about poetry, 